Now, containing and beating back COVID-19 has been made possible by big data collected via our digital footprint and our access to technologies. In places such as China, the state has complete and total access to everyone's personal information, which helps, of course, in tracing and tracking the spread of COVID-19. So is the era of the surveillance state upon us? And just how are governments now able to use big data to access your every move? Joining me to discuss this is tech specialist Toby Shapshak. Toby, good morning. Thank you so very much uh, for joining me here on The Fix. You heard uh, the designate uh, judge, uh, Kate O'Regan, speaking about um, safety measures um, that would um, you know, act as a break for a creep on authoritarianism in societies. But given the desperate need uh, for collecting centralized big data of citizens in order to uh, you know, fight an invisible enemy, is the surveillance state inevitable? And in this period, is it for the greater good? Well, it's a, it's a complex situation, isn't it? But firstly, uh, good morning and happy Easter. It, it's a complex situation because we've really never had anything like this. And, and, and thank God we have a, a justice of, of such high integrity as Kato Regan, who's going to be the, the designated judge. Um, and she, she makes a really good point, which is this is the first global pandemic in 100 years, the Spanish flu. Uh, was 1918. Interestingly, just as an aside, 100 years later, the, the virus that caused it, H1N1, was also the virus that caused swine flu, which some idiot in my office came to work with, and all of us got it uh, 10 years ago. Or so. so it's fascinating 100 years later what the difference of technology can do. But we do already live in a surveillance state, uh, Karima. It's just we're being surveilled by big corporations, not necessarily not necessarily by big government. And that's the dynamic. I mean, mm. if you want to do track what people were doing and how they were doing, just go ask Google or Facebook. Uh, they have an extraordinarily good picture of our online lives and what we do and what we like and where we go. And it's extrapolated from that. You could probably choose what food or takeaways people like to do using Google Maps. You can track where people go and how they work. Yeah. And this, <clears throat> prior to this whole COVID thing, there's been, a, as you well know, since the 2016 US presidential elections, there's been a massive revelation of just how much data about our personal lives, our personal likes and wants, all of these big tech firms are collecting. They are not collecting, luckily, our, our location data and where we go, except if you give them permission. Now, the New York Times last year ran a huge expose showing that even though people are given permission for anonymized content, actually, there's only one person who lives at that house and there's only one person who went yeah. from that house to the abortion clinic and then went to school where they work. Um, and that's... That's data that you can use to track people. In this instance, Toby, there's a public here. good for this, isn't there? There's a reason that we need to track this, which is if you're in Alexandra and you happen to walk through the same street market that someone who has, has the, the COVID-19 infection already and is showing symptoms, you would never probably know. But the government conceivably, conceivably can take all of that data from MTN and Vodacom and Celsi and Telcom and go, actually, all these 100 people were within vicinity of patient X. Let's track them and say, are you okay? Where are you? Who have yeah. you been in contact with? In terms of the data set, now this is amazing. You've never, you've never had access to data like this before. Accurate, precision data. Your cell phone is always in your pocket. Yeah. The network knows where you are because at any given time, your cell phone is pinging all of the cell phone towers to see which one gives you the best signal there for the best one to collect your WhatsApp messages or to make a phone call. What that also allows is, is a system that's called, technically it's called a GPS, a, 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 a assisted GPS. But it, it means because your phone is triangulating, which means it's picking up three positions, it gives you a pretty accurate position of where you are. It's amazing data if it's used benevolently. Okay. Now, we've seen Apple and Google that wants to turn uh, your phone into a COVID tracking 19 machine. Uh, 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 I mean, a COVID tracking machine. And um, they are obviously um, 
in the process of delivering a new tool um, that's going to allow um, different uh, companies to actually um, work with data. I'm not sure if you've seen it. It's uh, called a contract tracing yes. tool, um, and they want yes. to create it, and they want the smartphone to log um, when you've come into close contact with other people. Now, if these big companies that are giants and monopolies in their own right, Toby, collaborate, aren't we setting up a, a monster that we won't be able to control once this virus um, is dealt with? Uh, that is the fear, Karima, and, and that's been the fear for a long time, just about the tech firms themselves. They are, monster is a good word. They have so much information about us, more than we know ourselves. You know, there's the famous case of the, the teenage shopper at Target in the States a few years ago, who they started sending pregnancy information to. They knew she was pregnant before she knew she was pregnant, certainly before her parents. So, so a lot of this data is already there. It's about different kinds of behavior. Now, the idea from Google and Facebook is all good and well, but it needs a couple of there are a couple of barriers to entry, right? You have to have a smartphone. You have to have the data to download it. You have to have a smartphone with Bluetooth. The Bluetooth has to be turned on. There are a whole bunch of things that need to work. will work fantastic in, a, in an environment like America or Europe or Asia, not necessarily Africa, where so many people are, are, have smartphones but don't necessarily have the data. They simply mm. can't afford it. I mean, some smartphone users in Africa, the statistics vary, but it's something like only... Uh, uh, most people only have data for a third of the month. That's all they can afford. So it's all good and well having an app-based way of tracking it. If your population is has the technology available, the sophisticated enough smartphone, has Bluetooth, has the can afford to download the app on their, their mobile Wi-Fi, and then has the Bluetooth turned on at all times. So there's, there's some barriers to entry to that. But, you know, coming back to the database, the database, is, it's fantastic to hear uh, Justice O'Regan talking about a sunset clause and that the data will be anonymized. We hope that'll happen. But, of course, the fear is, is that someone... Uh, could just help themselves to that data. So we know very well uh, South Africa's intelligence community are, are anything uh, but honorable. Um, they seem to tap their own ministers' phones. They're forever inside uh, break-ins. I don't know how else to read them. I was a crime reporter. These, all of these break-ins are inside jobs. You can see at a distance. Uh, so, so we don't know that we can trust our own intelligence agency, and we don't know that we can trust our own governments. I mean, they haven't been able to roll out water for 26 years all of a sudden, uh, uh, they're having a run on JoJo tanks. I mean, buy shares in JoJo, I suppose, is, is the, the short answer. But suddenly the government's able to deliver because there's a crisis. We don't know which bad actors within our own government or our own intelligence service are going to just tap all of that data and hang on to it. You uh, know, Toby, well. let, me, let me come in here. So if you have big corporations with all this power, simply by you having a, a smartphone and you have governments that have now put in disaster regulations that allows them, albeit um, through a, a COVID-19 judge, access to your information, how does, um, uh, you know, Joe Soap in the street uh, who has a cell phone uh, protect him or herself? Is that even possible or are we beyond that stage Toby well we, we the way to protect yourself is not to have a cell phone to turn it off and not have access but then you cut yourself off from this amazing world that these spectacular cell phones and smartphones give us don't you so the only way to go dark in the surveillance economy is not to go online not to have a search but but what we're really looking at in the South African context is as I understand it as the uh, the suspended Minister of Communication put it. The, the data is being collected from the networks, it's location data, it's where you were, where you traveled, what you did. That's more, inf more useful information, I, I would say, because that says this person was in this uh, street market in Kailicha on the same day that this person we know uh, tested positive three days later, therefore we can track where that goes. That's useful data. Uh, and, and we hope that, that, that the government uses it judiciously because this truly is, it's like a scene from a science fiction movie, isn't it? Lockdown, <laughs> yeah. uh, viruses spreading. I mean, I see you wearing gloves. I mean, I don't know if it's, I'm at home, I'm safe, I'm, I'm wearing gloves. Um, but, it, but it's, you know, it's, we've never had this circumstance before. So in many ways, 
in terms of, of let's use technology startup speak, this is hugely disruptive. So all of these new things coming along, we might call them innovation, we might call them disaster management, uh, but we are collecting massive amounts of data. And that data is potentially dangerous. Right now, not so much. You know, I'm not visiting my drug dealer and I'm not going to see... Uh, I shouldn't say me, I should say people aren't visiting their drug dealers <laughs> and they're not going to, you know, they're not going to brothels and they, you know, they're not meeting uh, the other members of the Soprano mafia family. So there's, there's very little useful data, uh, I suppose, unless you're tracking uh, uh, street gangs because they'll probably be together. So, so those are the kinds of things that, that, that you can get from that location data. Right now, you know, I'm very boring. I'm at home. Uh, you know, I'm in this room, I'm in that room, I'm in the kitchen. That's not very useful. It's when you start extrapolating the, that behavior of citizens in their everyday lives, moving from work to home to who they associate with, that's when the fear is about Absolutely. Toby, we've unfortunately, we we've unfortunately run out of time. And I suppose when you have access to such powerful search engines and such centralized databases, the important thing is to do no harm and to obviously work within the Constitution and the framework of the Bill of Rights. But certainly a brand new world opening before for us in this time of crisis. Well, you've had your fix for the week. Thank you so much for uh, watching. And of course, we'll see you again next Sunday. Goodbye.